So it is finally time to put the Pinasco 225 direct together. Before we do anything right now, we gotta gap our piston rings properly. I use the formula bore times 0 0.004, which brings us here to 0.279 millimeters. If it doesn't fit, I gap them with a file, and once they're ready, I can mount them onto the piston. When it comes to piston rigs, it's nice to have a little bit of a fingernail, which makes spreading the ring and sliding it on easier. Now, once the piston rings are on, I put a circlip on one side, get um, the entire bottom end ready, and then I can slide the piston pin through from one side, and then put the circlip on that side in as well. I'm super paranoid when it comes to circlips, so I make sure two or three times that they are seated properly. In this case, I did put the studs into the cases after I mounted the piston because it gave me more room to work with. And once all of that stuff was done, it was time to slide the uh, cylinder on. I had a little bit of trouble, so it kind of just clunked down at some point. Oh. But everything was fine. Before I ended up torquing the cylinder head on uh, in its final position, I did check compression and I also did check squish just to make sure I don't have to run an octane booster or maybe decompress a little bit. Everything was fine. With the cylinder mounted, we're gonna focus on the ignition. In this case, I'm gonna mount a Pinasco Flytac, which is this uh, four coil uh, stator, and a two piece flywheel that has a plastic fan bolted onto it. Because I am going here for more of a touring setup, I wanted a heavier flywheel, so I got this nice uh, CNC cut aluminum fan from Pinasco, which raises the weight up to about 1.7 kilos. Putting the ignition onto the case is pretty straightforward. We start with our stator plate, and then we redo the stator plate because I forgot to feed the, uh, <laughs> the wires through the case. But once everything is in position, I had a look at the instructions on which Pinasco makes it pretty clear uh, what little notch means what timing. That said, I do always check my timing with a timing light uh, once I get to start up my engine. Just to make sure, because burning a hole in your piston is kind of a solid mistake to make. Once the stator plate was bolted down, I use a little bit of Loctite so I can put the Woodruff key in place. Here it was nice and easy and just slid in. And then I can mount my flywheel. Once the flywheel is torqued down, which was a little bit sketchy due to the plastic fans, but it worked out, I took the plastic fan actually off. It is a super light fan. If I ever go very revy on this engine, I'll go and put it back on. But for now, we'll put this nice black anodized fan on. Not only does, is it heavier, but it also looks really rad. This concludes the ignition side of the engine and we can now move on to the intake. Now, this is what the cylinder is all about. We have a RD350 reed setup with a nice stuffer that sits directly on your cylinder. It gives you just a really nice and short intake distance. The assembly was pretty straightforward, I think. It's just, I needed to put my gaskets where they belong and make sure I turn my intake into the right direction, which is a bit counterintuitive because it points upwards. But once it's on the engine, it makes a lot more sense. Once the bolts are in, I was able to torque them down and mount it onto the cylinder. To cover up the rotary intake, Pinasco provided this nice little plate that you put over, um, you know, the big hole in your engine. You get the idea. I used a little bit of silicon gasket just to make sure that there's absolutely no air leak from this and torqued it down. It's worth mentioning there were no instructions on how much I uh, should have torqued this down. I used the same specs as carburetor bolts, so like anywhere between 17 and 22 newton meters. Once all the stuff was together, I just cleaned up the gaskets to make it look nice, and it was all sealed up. It held up at a leak down test. 
And just before it was time to mount it into the frame, I put the last few bits on, which is clutch cover, backing plate, brakes, and finally the rear drum. With all that together, uh, with a pair of extra hands, I hung the engine into the frame and I was all giddy to fire this thing up for the first time. Alright, real talk for a second, this engine has been together since May, right now it's October 2018. I have probably put about a thousand miles on it since. If you follow us on Instagram you've seen pictures on and off of this bike that has been taken out. And it is, it is a blast to ride. I will dedicate the entire next video of going through the entire bike in detail from the fork to the engine talk with you what happened what's going on where the bike is right now and what are the changes that I did to it since because it flies it's an airplane on wheels it is so much fun I can't wait um, until then please follow us on Instagram so you can stay up to date what's going on follow us on Facebook blah 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 all that good stuff don't forget to comment subscribe and so on and I will see you in the next video where we'll con conclude this project.